how nice it would be if I have a BMW for the weekends and a hybrid BMW for weekdays. Let's check it out, the brand new 330e. Hello guys! Uh, yep, yeah, it's raining, but the rain never stopped. The work has to continue, right? So this is the 330e, the BMW G20 330e, the plug-in hybrid. Let's look around the car. As you can see, it looks a lot better than the 320i, right? Um, big price difference? Nope. Um, just about 20,000 and then you get a total system output of 252 horsepower 400 over newton meters of torque actually not that much of a difference when compared to the previous generation because the drivetrain is proven the whole thing lock stop barrel comes into here probably with a bit of nick and tuck on reliability right and uh, dependability and it's there all right now in terms of BMW, uh, Alex Wong had a 6 Series, I have a 6 Series, Con has two 5 Series, Thomas has one 3 Series, Stephen Ao has a X1 I believe, and then uh, Chu Yang had an M3, yeah, basically you get it, you get the gist of it, a lot of BMWs, why? They drive well, exceptionally well, okay, so that is something that everybody knows, let's look at the car. Okay, now being a plug-in hybrid is no longer the case whereby you see oh the plug-in hybrid has the vents that open and close no the regular ones does uh, have that as well now the headlamps are the same as the 330i when it arrives so it's not the full LED but it is partial but okay I mean at least they make it look good you know with the projectors and then you have the daytime running lights now the G20 styling has proven to be very very successful Okay, what with this, the previous generation Peugeot design, a bit like that, right? All right, but, but overall the car looks good, you know, the grill, the kidney grill, thank God, you know, is, you know. But we're not sure what BMW has in plans, right? But nevertheless, the M4 grill, a lot of people got used to it. So I would say styling wise, BMW still has it. All right, they still look good. They still look athletic. The classic proportions of a rear-wheel drive sports sedan is that of BMW to own. Any car that looks this proportion, they owe it to BMW, right? The short front overhang. Look at how far ahead the front wheels are. You look at the base of the A-pillar from here all the way to here. That's classic BMW proportions, all right? And then the tail and a short boot this proportion was established since the e36 and it has been carried forward in the e46 you know the e90 and of course the f30 and all that all right so 330e why so we have the 330i right it arrived first with the m sport suspension uh, very stiff suspension uh, very sporty drive and uh, that would be the one where people for those to get when they want outright driving uh, performance I mean put aside an M340i or M M3 but that is for like you know the everyday premium luxury car buyer and then they have the 320i which is like the entry into the 3 series and that one comes with the analog dials and a more sedate styling and this one which is a good spec from what I see, all right? You get the digital stuffs, you get a sporty wheels, you get Pilot Sport 4 tires, proper body kit, M Sport body kit, and it just looks the part, all right? Now the G20 is a big car. Big and uh, not too lightweight. And then as you can see here, the whole bulge 
now you can see where the boot is going the whole thing just slides up and then it sits on top this is the height difference between my hand and my phone all right that's the flashlight on there so yep that's the hybrid battery the first thing you will feel when you drive this car is that when you go over a speed bump at moderate speeds the front suspension does it all right and then the rear just boom, you know because this thing weighs 300 kilos more than the standard ones and let's explore the car together just like how i do in all my reviews i don't look at the car first and remember what i want to say and then tell you guys i explore it together with you guys all right i don't see no button to power close it but it's all right right it's a, it has a swan neck mechanism and i think that's fine is you can close it you know very lightly and these are the 3d tail lamps they look just as good look at that they bulge out and gives this signature l light that is prevalent over all bmws um, styling wise of course it looks the same like all g20 right some of the highlights they feature they tell us when they launch the car look at the glass over here the d pillar and then there's a update to the hofmeister kink which i think is pointless i think it's just the designer having a personal vendetta against hofmeister mr hofmeister i mean what's the point of adding another angle to it you know instead of just keeping the tradition there all right there's a little kink over there as well overall the car is huge all right the the new 3 series is just huge and then there's also the long wheelbase can you imagine that all right let's come to the rear first all right let's come to the boot and oh, no, let's come to the rear and let's look at the space that i have at the back here no difference to the standard 3 series that's all right from the base of the rear seats to the rails in front just nice for my size 11 and a half feet and i can slot my feet underneath somewhat the center tunnel the space between the center tunnel still pretty tight but of course that's the long wheelbase for those of you okay there are two usb-c ports here climate control over here climate vents over here pretty all right at the back and then this is the eye level this is my eye level i am 5 foot 11 all right and you can see obviously the rear seats are perched higher than the front seats so that i get a very good overall view out of the car when i'm seated at the back and this car is just bigger than the f30 in every dimension okay here is an armrest nothing special over here no compartments here in terms of headroom I get about two fingers above my head, but I'm five foot eleven. Those of you who are not, you may get more headroom. Okay. Um, yep, that's the appointment at the back. Uh, fit and finish is good. All right, overall fit and finish is good, but I it seems to me that the German car makers have make a move away from those polyurethane soft touch material and in this place are actually hard plastics covered with a layer of softer material instead of the whole thing being squidgy it's just a very thin layer on top that is somewhat soft to the touch but obviously underneath is hard uh, I see Mercedes did that first and now BMW leather wrap over here nice finishing fit and finish is alright but let me tell you this or tell luxury car maker this good fit and finish is no longer exclusive to luxury cars all right pop into a mazda or a new honda or a new toyota you get plenty of this level of build quality these days all right so luxury car makers better take note not that you guys are not doing anything bad but it's just that the other car makers are catching up now 
this is the wireless charging tray and it fits my Note 10 okay so it fits some somewhat it works the other day it doesn't work but today it works nice USB port here so the 5 series doesn't fit my Note 10 but this one does interesting right <laughs> Okay, let's start the car. Even though it's a hybrid, even though battery is very low, it will still start in EV mode so that you get that quiet, serene feel when you start the car. Uh, these are all plastic buttons. These are all plastic buttons, but in the middle is, you know, is set in chrome, rather nice. The 10.2 inch is nice. There's proximity sensor and uh, there's a... Uh, it's responsive, it's, it's BMW, alright, you get the iDrive controller over here, you know, you get some haptic feedbacks when you press them, media, home, map, navigation, uh, all these are there, alright, those of you who are familiar with BMW systems, they're all there, but again, like I said, I think it's about time they revamp it in terms of software, because in this era of touch sensitive screens, you don't need a lot of layers to go into deeper and deeper menus these days. It's no, it's no longer necessary. A lot of things can be floating icons outside instead of just like a big visual here showing you what this selection is. You know, it, it is... Look at that. Contacts. Telephone, you know. In, in this era, we don't need this much real estate to tell us what we are selecting, right? Everything can be out there operation can be faster so i think it's about time bmw revamp this okay coming to this this is digital speedometer all right uh we can see bmw now makes it a little bit more exciting last time it's just two dials and then a little space in between but now the whole integration is done really well you know they the graphics are crisp high res almost like a game interface all right and uh, its legibility is really good and of course they have some you know visual stuff where the the needle actually goes behind the, the the digit and then the digit floats on top you know these are nice visual gimmicks pretty pretty all right i hope bmw can further integrate more give more option just like how mercedes does i know Car makers of this level, they don't want to copy one another, but Mercedes having a little touch sensitive jock that controls this screen, another one that controls this screen is brilliant. Just copy. I don't think they patent this. All right, nobody patent this kind of stuff. Just copy because that is brilliant. All right, these are, it's not that these are not, but that execution is, is something that you cannot argue because it's just outright logical. All right, this is still there. Run your fingers across the touch sensitive, the rows of shortcut buttons are there. Apple CarPlay, you need to pay, you need to top up a thousand two hundred ringgit. And uh, some people may complain it, but for me, I would say if you can afford a car that is two hundred fifty thousand, what is a thousand five hundred ringgit? And please do not ask your salesperson to chip in the AirPlay for you or the CarPlay for you with his commission. It's unfair, all right? Salesperson don't earn a lot when they sell you a car and you ask for 1,000, 2,000 ringgit discount, which the amount is dispersed over your six, seven year loan and it is 50% of his commission, you know? It's unfair to do that. Please be more fair to car salesperson, all right? Uh, I don't know why people like to nego and bargain with car salesperson even 500 ringgit even a tinting even a thousand ringgit when you're buying cars of, of this level all right so don't embarrass yourself don't nego with the salesperson let them earn the commission that they deserve to earn all right a gear lever i as a long time bmw owner i really think bmw if 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 you can't spec the crystal gear knob in your lower end models at least give a gear lever that is probably higher quality than the previous older BMW gear lever because as, as, as a BMW owner, right, you, you, you use the previous gear lever, you know, in the G12, last appearing in the G12 or the 
G30 actually still have it and then you come to this new one it it really does feel a lack in a, a reduce a reduction in quality okay um nice you know felt um this one pops up you know Put your stuff in there a large enter armrest with another USB-C port in there the seats hold really well uh, adjustability is nice overall it's still a 3 series it has the chunky BMW steering wheel the large pedals you know overall it's still nice but I can tell you these days you hop into this car you hop into a Mazda 3 you can't really tell if this one is 100k more in this era I'm not complaining about 3 series they are where they are it's well built you know proper technology all this is proper proper stuff but I'm just saying that the differences is reducing in terms of interior fit and finish right the Japanese boys are catching up real fast especially Mazda um, these are all really nice you know comfortable lovely the sitting position is lovely um, the see my left foot that's a foot rest all right come Mercedes C-Class owners that's a foot rest all right very very comfortable and when you drive fast on windy roads sometimes you need to press your legs on the footrest and then pin your back pin the back against the seat for better cornering I mean better seating when you're cornering hard uh, in the C-Class because they don't have a left footrest in the right hand drive version your feet will just slide and there were a few times where my left feet slide beneath the brake pedals alright if not I would have loved the C63. All right, uh, door panel, very, very nicely designed. You put large bottles over here. That's the button to open the boot. That's basically you release it and it pops open because it's a swan neck, spring loaded swan neck mechanism. All right, this is for the fuel cap. And um, everything is logically placed. I still miss the German car's dial, which somehow they took it away and put buttons instead. Um, yeah. Everything is logically placed and nice. BMW used to have the door lock and unlock button in the middle so that everyone can press it. Now it's back here and then the passenger doesn't have a lock and unlock button so she will have to, you know, lean over here to press this. All right, so let's go for the evening drive, shall we? 330E, let's go. When I switch to Pro Mileage, in my case, I got 46-47% of savings oh, for that car. Yeah. Pro Mileage was the only one that gave me 5,000 extra value to cover. Yet, still cheaper. A lot less. A lot Turn less. Up. Hello! <clears throat> yep, let's go for a drive. It's evening because it's raining whole day just now. Now the rain just ease. And oh my god. <laughs> That's the thing with hybrids, right? You put your foot down, it doesn't need to build the revs, and then the car just launches quietly. Oops. That's the signal. Very nice, very comfortable, very quiet, suspension is... Oh, the rear, that is unexpected. You see, in the 330E F30 generation, the suspension is extremely pliant. Going through speed bumps is a beauty. This one, somehow the front deals with it well, but the rear sort of goes up and then falls down. I suspect... That is, of course, due to the weight of the battery behind. Okay, speed bump again. The front deals with it well. Yeah, the front deals with it well. The rear just sort of bobs when it's about to come down. <laughs> I suspect it's the weight. I suspect 
it's uh, the suspension tuning but it's not as it's not as magic carpet as the previous 330e when dealing with stuffs like these all right um, nevertheless put it out uh, this car is 300 kilos heavier than the regular 320i. Now the engine is actually the 184 horsepower 320i engine and then of course mated to a hybrid motor and the total system output is 252 horsepower and there is an extra boost function that gives you another 40 horsepower for a short while. For those who own the 330e and are very happy with it and are thinking what, what should you get, you love the hybrid driving uh, experience. I myself have owned uh, two XC90s before, both T8, alright, and I can tell you, oh there's an XC90 in front, I can tell you the experience of driving a plug-in hybrid is amazing because it gives you another dimension of car ownership experience. You no, know, you're, you're not just going into yet another car with yet another 2 liter turbocharged engine and then use it like how you used the previous car. In a plug-in hybrid, you get instances like this where the car just glides and it's so smooth because the engine is not started and it's just so serene and so nice. Uh, which you don't get in any ICE engine. And I remember I was crossing the Penang, uh, I, was, I was in the Penang ferry when it was announced that they're gonna stop it. I brought my kids, I managed to bring my kids to, to experience the Penang ferry. You know, they ask you to switch off your car, all right? And, uh, prop, and open your windows if, if, if you feel warm. But then the, the, the ferry runs on diesel, right? And, and the diesel fume is just there if there's not a lot of wind. So I'm the only car on the ferry with my engine switched off, but with my air conditioning running because I have a plug-in hybrid car. And that sort of just, mm, that's really nice. Or sometimes I'm waiting for my family member to buy something by the roadside and there are, let's say a roadside mamak store or something like that, or a hawker, right? Your car is just stopped right next to the stall where there are people sitting there eating. Imagine your car spewing out exhaust while you're waiting for them to cook your takeaway, right? In a hybrid, you can go into it. Guess where I'm, you, you know where I'm going with this, all right? It's nice. It gives you another, uh, like I said, another kind of new experience of car ownership when you move into this. Now, in terms of hybrid, a lot of people are the oh, hybrids, hybrids, hybrids. You know, yes, yes, and yes. Uh, batteries have a reasonable lifespan, just like some other components, like your steering rack. Like if you own a Valfire and Alphard from 2010, 2011, a lot of you would have overhauled your transmission, right? Your gearbox or your steering rack would have gone. Your tie rods would have gone. Your drive shafts, you know. Everything actually have a life has a lifespan, but granted, when I'm when you consider the fact that these components cost has come down gradually, right? And um, over sorry, the traction control <laughs> kicked in, uh, and um, sorry that that gave me a shock just now because I'm 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 in electric mode, and and the road is slippery and the paint on top of the speed bump is even more slippery and the traction control actually kick in just now not just to remove kinetic power from a, a spinning wheel or cut engine power it's, it actually kick in to cut the electric power so it, it was a new sensation that I never experienced just now now overall the car it drives like a 3 series it's more pliant than the 330i and and I think it's just pleasant, it's pleasant, all right? And in, I, I know that time when all Mercedes-Benz has a 350E and that actually has quite a number of unhappy customers because of the reliability of the hybrid drivetrain, uh, the, the early, early generation, and of course, BMW was even earlier with the active hybrid and all that. Uh, but now, as far as I can see,
then the three thirty E's they're running everywhere. I mean, if if they don't put the hybrid moniker there, it's just an ICE car with a larger battery that stores some power and use it later, just like our ancillary battery, right? So I think it's it's about time. I mean, if 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 car makers don't fully go into EVs, I think plug-in hybrids are uh, the logical step forward for internal combustion engine for an everyday car you know this is an everyday car albeit for a higher income bracket person all right so 250,000 is not expensive at all considering the fact that 330e's are priced way higher than 330i's in in a lot of markets all right in in, in US or Europe so for us we get a bargain for buying uh, a very well spec 330e in Malaysia at this entry price point, 250,000. It's a large car. It's comfortable, um, reasonably comfortable. The boot is smaller though. The boot is smaller, but overall, it is still, still a, a winning recipe, right? That's why the 330e F30 generation sell in that kind of number in Malaysia. It's just a, an attractive proposition, all right? But it's the rear suspension that got me curious, you know. I mean, I was like, what's different resulting in... Maybe it's, a, it's an M Sport suspension that has a, you know, stiffer rebound or something. But other than that... can't see there's anything that they haven't improved massively over the F30 generation okay especially soundproofing soundproofing is is amazing this car all right for this segment um, there are, are there competitors that's the S60 T8 um, but I think that one is more expensive than this because Volvo's strategy with their T8 is they maxed out the ICE engine and then they add it there and then it makes them a flagship, you know. So Volvo's plug-in hybrid strategy is to challenge the BMW M340i in terms of power output. Okay, so the S60 is definitely more powerful than this, way faster than this, even though this one is no slouch. And uh, I think in terms of interior finishing, um, I think Volvo has a higher, more, more, more luxurious touch to this and, uh, and an infotainment system that's by far easier to use. Uh, but what it doesn't have is the rear wheel drive chassis of, of a 3 Series, alright, because um, no doubts about it, okay, these guys are still nicer to drive. All right. Yeah, that's the end of my review. Okay, so you can check a lot of my other reviews. I've done more than a thousand car reviews over the past few years, but and then before that, I'm in this industry for twelve years already. Uh, I've been writing magazine articles and all that before this. All right, so thanks for watching. And um, if I were to copy car wow should you consider or should you just buy it i would say you should consider this okay and for those who are still asking me oh should i buy the c class come on the new one is coming you're not gonna buy the current w205 and then the 206 arrive immediately right so yeah cheers bye